Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to show you how to start a data science project. So I'll show you the boilerplate that I'm using and the basic thing that I'm doing in all of my data science project. So uh, I'll be using a bunch of technology and uh, that are related mainly to Python. Uh, but if you are uh, using other type of uh, programming language, this process or the core of it can also work. So let's get to it. The very first thing that I always do is I go and create a, uh, a remote repository, either in GitHub or GitLab, depending on uh, where's my, my team at. So you just create, let's say, a uh, boilerplate, right? Um, doesn't need to have anything fancy here because you're going to see we're going to use another tool to populate the, the repository with the file that uh, we need. Here is just to have a remote um, repository set up. So the point of having a remote repository is that you first don't have to have always the code in your um, computer. So it's uh, less of a liability. Second of all, it allows you to put some checkpoint because if it's a remote Git repository, um, you're using Git and Git is a way to version control your stuff. Um, and it also allow you to um, uh, collaborate effectively with other people. So no matter what I do, and even if the project is me alone, I always start with a remote repository. So I have this, um, this thing over here. I'm gonna boot up my terminal. I'm gonna go to my desktop. I'm gonna git clone this. So uh, uh, learning git is, uh, uh, I would say it's a very important skill uh, software for software engineering and even for data science. Um, it doesn't really matter. As soon as you have code, um, Git is important. I think that not enough um, data science, the data scientist knows it. And you don't have to know a lot. You have to know like about six comments and you're good. Okay, so it's over there. And you can see there's absolutely nothing in this thing. So. There's, there's, there's just nothing in there. All right. So the second thing that I always do is I decide which ID I'm going to use depending on the project. Really, um, sometimes I prefer to use PyCharm. Other times I prefer to use Visual Studio Code, but these days I'm more inclined to, uh, just use Visual Studio Code, um, right off the bat. Um, and I, an ID is very, it's a, it's an important part of, uh, your workflow because it will, if you set it up properly, it will make you just more effective and uh, allow you to work better. I like Visual Studio Code because it can read Jupyter Notebook and you don't have to leave the ID. You can even run a bunch of terminal here if you need to. Um, so it's pretty neat. So yeah, that's the second thing. Figure out what ID you're gonna use and use it. If you're working in R, maybe R Studio is good. If you're working in Python, you have a whole lot of them. You have Visual Studio Code that you can use. You have PyCharm. You have uh, either, um, you can also just use a raw Jupyter um, lab. Um, yeah, just select one and, um, and stick to it. And as you work with it, you find ways of improving your productivity. All right, so the third thing that uh, we're going to do here is to populate this with the, the right file structure, I would say. So what I like to use is this cookie cutter. Um, so what is it? It's just like uh, here, a way of structuring the folder structures that makes sense for data science project. It's pretty well made and if you uh, don't know half of this, it's good because you're going to be able to learn with the structure that makes sense and it will be much easier for you than to come up yourself with the structure. Usually this type of structure is good enough uh, for most projects, you don't have to go to custom. Um, so the first thing you have to do is to pip install a bunch of stuff. So here I'm going to make a mistake on purpose. So I'm going to pip install this right here. Um, there we go. I have it. I'm, now it's, it's installed. And then I'm going to use it over there. I'm going to use it over there to populate my stuff. So um, actually you'll see it will tell me a bunch of stuff. So my project name is border plate data Oops, people. Yes me so there we go i want a mit license i don't have a stream bucket no and i want python 3. good so it's over there 
So in this this thing, I will have this thing. Um, I like to just take the whole thing and move it up a level. Um, yeah, maybe there's a command to do that from the get go, but uh, I'm not sure. Here is my stuff. I have my README. I have my um, my requirement.txt that for installing all the package that I need. So I have a fairly well structured of a base repository that then I can um, I can improve upon as I code along. So once you change something, you can add the files to the git. Say I add a cookie cutter. Okay, and then I can git push this. And there we go. So now if I look here, um, it was empty before, now I have this. So it's pretty much better. Um, so I have my, I have this thing in my remote repository now. Okay, so if you followed, you've seen that I, I did pip install whatever, and I said that it was a mistake. The problem with pip installing raw like this on the global environment, as if you were uh, downloading an app or whatever, is that you're most likely not gonna work on one project only and be the only one ever to work on it on this computer. Um, so you have to have some sort of way of compartmentalizing the environment where you install the stuff. So this is where you should use virtual environment. So virtual environment is kind of a way of uh, tracing a boundary between this project uh, libraries that you're installing and other project libraries. And then it, there, there's a technique to take the environment and shoot it into a file, the requirement.txt file, so that other people can then just pip install this super fast. Um, so I never know, I never remember how to, yeah, you have to do this. So here I'm just going to use the virtual environment. It's usually uh, installed from the get-go. And then I just need to put the path that I want. So I want it here and it's going to be called Venv uh, for virtual environment. And then this should, uh, I think I should do that. Okay, good, got it. And um, the version of Python is 3.7, so that's good. Um, so if you see I have this weird folder with like Venv stuff. Um, and now since I'm in uh, Windows, I just need to do Venv and then script and then activate and then you can activate the virtual environment. Now I have my now whatever I'm doing on the command line or installing whatever is gonna happen here instead of the global whole computer virtual environment. Like all of the thing I did over here is like, you just need to remember like to come in, like how to activate it. So then you work here and how to deactivate it. So you don't work here anymore. And I honestly don't know what is in the rest of this. I don't know what the structure really is. Just know that if I do this uh, effectively, I can have my stuff there and then I can pip install everything that is in my requirement of txt. So this is the command. So pip install our requirement, this thing. So we will recursively try to install this. Let's look at how it's doing it. Good. I think yeah, with this uh, repository, you can also just make install. Yeah, I think you can do that. So however you're doing it, you can install stuff and then it will happen only in your virtual environment. So once this is done, I'll show you. Okay, good. So technically I installed the whole thing. If I pip freeze that, okay, I have a bunch of stuff here. So this is good. And then I can pip freeze requirements.txt. Right. So now I have my file with uh, I can have my file with all of my uh, requirement over there. Um, so that's it. That's this is important. And then you can git push. But the, before you git push, I uh, just need to make, to make sure that you're not pushing this environment, the virtual environment here. So you're going to have to uh, set up your git ignore so that uh, you're not doing this. Is it? It's not. You just here. Yeah, so it's not, it's not gonna be added and everything that is inside also. So then I can do git add, git commit, 
add virtual and this should go over there so now I'm ready to install a bunch of package so I can do something like pip install pandas and then it will install pandas over here just for this particular project I can even say what type of, um, of a version of panda I need it will also install numpy um, and then I can install let's say um, matplotlib and then just dump that into my uh, requirement.txt and then people that will work on with this will be able to um, um, to install the stuff properly all right good so and now I'm almost ready to start actually doing something because this is just set up um, then I will just download the data put it over there at the right spot and then I can just jump start and put like Jupyter notebook I can use directly Jupyter lab or create the Jupyter notebook over here I think it's dot I P I yeah I can have it here and then start to to code along and um, before I do any of this what I would like to do before starting a an actual uh, uh, data science project is to go over in my github uh, repository and start to kind of project manage it before um, before touching anything uh, one thing I've realized is that it especially at the start it's very easy to go in all different direction so it's always good to kind of take a step back project manage yourself a bit um, put a bunch of tasks and then go ahead and and do them just being able to uh, guide yourself a bit more at the start uh, allow you afterward to kind of work effectively so um, and I don't use no nothing fancy I try to use whatever is already there so um, and depending on your team or uh, whoever you're working with um, I, I like to have the, the to-do list and uh, code all, all at the same spot so I usually just create the project and it's kind of a kind of general uh, board um, I like to have one like this and uh, I delete all of the notes I don't care about them and I and I keep the to do in progress and done kind of workflow and um, just a basic Kanban and after that once I got this going I go over here and I kind of create an issue and say like something um, ensure that the code folder plate is also but then I assigned this to myself this is a, some documentation and I put it into this project and then I can just go right ahead um, and then I just create all of my tasks right and then when I go over here uh, in my general to do I can just take the task ensure that the right person has it and that it maybe let's say it's perfectly time bound and then once whenever I want to work on something and just put in progress and it seems silly if you're working alone uh, because you know what to do right but you don't always be on with the project sometimes you you leave it for a month you come back you don't know what the hell is going on um, so I like to give myself task and then do the task and then come back and it, it might sound a bit insane but what I also do is um, I'm gonna go on the task and uh, like comments stuff alone so I'm, I'm talking to myself alone and it might seem like a big waste of time but it helped me ground my thinking and uh, if I ever have to uh, be interrupted or I have to step out and come back I don't have to think the benefit of this is that I just need to check out the task that I, is in progress look at where I was uh, whenever I stopped and then pick it up from there and, and continue going and as soon as I'm done I close the issue and I put it to done and I iterate um, sometimes I also like to put some milestone just so to know like why I'm doing this thing right so for instance um, maybe one milestone in the past project was to get a conference paper out so that was the milestone there was a due date I knew what what the minimal requirement were and I project managed all the tasks and I knew how much work roughly I needed to get done so that's it that's that's kind of the, the setup and as soon as this is done I'm good to go and I can start to work so last bonus thing that I'm gonna tell you which um, 
is to work in a kind of, you see this more in like software, pure software engineering uh, setup is you have the main branch or the master branch, and then you have like a feature branch and uh, then you do a merge request like this. Um, this I love to do. I love to do that because uh, it allowed me to always keep my main branch clean um, and always have something that I know that this checkpoint, it was all good, everything was fine. Um, and then whatever I did afterward, I'm, I'm working on, a, on an improvement. Um, I think it might be overkill for most uh, most project, but if your thing is starting to be a bit more full-fledged or you're working with more than uh, yourself alone, try to think about this and to start to make a branch, work on the branch and then make a pull request or a merge request. Um, and um, you know, one thing I like to do is to, whenever I'm working with someone, even if like they're on my team, but they are not on my uh, specific project, I assign them a, a pull request and I tell them, just look at my code and give me comments. Um, and this is very useful because it allows you to learn about them and them to learn about you and to exchange information and exchange knowledge. So I would highly recommend to do that, but keep that as a bonus. Um, if you have all of this set up uh, from the get-go, you're, you're more likely to have a, have a very clean project in the future and it's more than enough. So that's it. That's how I start uh, most of my project. I uh, hope that this was useful. If you have any comments or question, uh, do let me know in the, in the comment section. And if you don't agree with uh, any of this, especially the commenting yourself uh, in the issue part, uh, do let me know. Uh, I'll be happy to discuss that. So have a fantastic week, everyone.